some stuff that's related to uh, that particular topic. Makes it difficult well, if you're looking for that with a specific company. Uh, if you're not really going to find it there. You're more likely to find that in, just in online news somewhere, right? Or searching places like the Wall Street Journal. Or, or, you or, might find more industry averages. Yeah. But you know, if you were going to formulate a question, I kind of get a sense you want to know this because this is what you're doing at work. And I just looked at your resume. But if you're asking a question, you might phrase it rather than what is your shrinkage percentage? Because nobody wants to admit that the folks are stealing things out of the back door of the warehouse, do they? So you might you might say, what kind of programs have you implemented to reduce shrinkage? I've been working in that area. Some of the things I've done, I do daily cycle counts. We classify ABC items and count the most expensive items daily. You know, you might tell what you're doing and then ask that question. Don't put these people on the defense with the question of, right? And then don't ask them a question that you should already know about the company. It is expected before you go to that mock interview, you'll spend about an hour at, I would say at a minimum, reading the website, looking at some of these sites like API Inform or Ibis World to see what's happened recently in the company, in the industry, so you will know and you can formulate a question. Now if you get stuck, sort of my go-to question is, people like to talk about themselves. So if you can't think of anything and you're just pretty nervous and the sweat's running in your back, then you, you might just say, tell me how you've been successful in this job. How will I be evaluated in six months? What does a good employee in an inventory management position look like? Whatever. Uh, why is this job available? You want to know, is somebody fired? You know, tell me what you're looking for in a good fit. So you maybe get them talking and maybe you, your nervousness goes away a little bit. You can remember some of the questions about the company that you can ask. But that's why we've got the portfolios and why you've got those to take with you. So I jot down the questions. Sometimes people will interview you. There'll be more than one person there. I try to write down their name in my pad. I sort of draw out the table and write who's sitting here and there as much of the name as you can get because remember you're going to send them a thank you note. So the, the method to this madness is we'll beat your resume in shape. We've almost got them there. They're looking so good, by the way. And you know everybody you let look at it is going to have a different format to do it. The main thing you got to remember is correct the spelling, correct the typos, make sure they can contact you for the interview. So you, uh, we're going to match you with a company based on your major. And Ms. Rafe is going to send you an email that will say, we've set you up to interview with Mohawk. You're going to interview with Sally Jones. So you'll email Miss Sally Jones. I can't wait to talk to you about your opening. You've written this like one of the entry level jobs that's posted in Georgia. So you're going to write that nice email. You're going to blind card and copy Miss Rafey in the email field so she knows you've sent that. And then they'll contact you. You might just say, I'm in class. I'm free on Fridays to interview or my best time after four or whatever. I'm sorry. So you might ask them, you know, would these times be available? Then go do your research. Go to ABI Inform, the Business Source Complete, IBIS World. Professor Berger's upstairs in the library. I can answer any questions Absolutely. if you have those. So you've done your homework, you're ready, got your portfolio, extra copies of your resume. In case you interview with several people, you can pass out your resume while you're there. Make sure you map quest it and maybe do a dry run. How long is it going to take me to get there and rush out or on, or on a Thursday at 3? You don't want to be late. We're going to talk about dress a little bit later on, but map quest it so you know how to get there. Be thinking about the questions in the car. Usually the mock interviews will take about an hour. Now we had a couple of, really I'm looking at Tina because she knows some of this data. She inputs a lot of this for us. We had one company that did what, two hours? Two hours. Two hours, some as short as 45 minutes, 30 minutes, but for the most part, about an hour. And then once they finished, I emailed them a survey monkey link and asked them, how did how'd your resume look? How did your cover letter look? Did you come on time? Did you wear interview clothes? Did you have good questions? It's a really short survey, and I think we've got a sample PDF of it in Georgia View so you can see what they'll be asked, and they'll respond to us. And then 
I'll have all that data for you. That's one of the things we do on the last day of class in this class, is look and see what were some of the main comments that we got back about the mock interview so you can improve. But the method to the madness here is for you to get over your interview jitters and work out the bugs in the mock interview so when it comes time for that job you really, really want, you will know how to go through this process and be ready to interview because you know that when they're interviewing entry-level jobs, all they really have got to look at is the resume. And you can't believe how people start focusing on typos. I know it's three pages, but it's odd how much time it takes to get this right. And they'll start looking at sure. looking at the details. Um, and I would definitely add that um, just in personal experience and also having been on the other side of like the hiring table, um, a lot, as a person writing a resume or cover letter, a lot of times it can be hard to see your own mistakes after you've looked at it so long because your brain fills in like what you meant and you're like, you just don't see them. So having someone else look over it can be valuable as well. So I'm sure if you guys are all working on it, then maybe your classmates are willing to look at it for you. But then maybe they're competing with you. <laughs> then you can ask me. <laughs> Professor Carruthers, come on down here and tell us your thoughts. Professor Carruthers taught business communication last semester and so he's a he's a pro at this as well there's a couple of things first of all there's another reason why your mock interviews are important that you might not be thinking of and why you need to take it very very seriously you might be looking at it as an academic exercise and it's part of the course you're taking but you don't know what's going to happen two years down the road you could be out here and the job the company that you had the mock interview with posts a job that's your ideal dream job and you want to apply for the job. Yet when you did your mock interview, you didn't take it seriously. Uh, in some cases, people don't even reach out and call the person they're supposed to for the mock interview. Or they go in and they don't take a lot of care because it's just an academic exercise. You could be you know, burning the bridge for the job you want two years down the road. So don't do that to yourself. Take it seriously. The second thing is, uh, I hear a lot of uh, discussion or, or rumbling amongst the ranks about, you know, we had Professor Vizalski and she looked at our resumes and cover letters and she said this. And then we had Professor Crothers and he said this. And then we had Dr. Helms and she said that. And now we have a new professor in communications. We'll have a different read. There's not really one right answer. Every person who looks at your resume and cover letter will emphasize something different. I've hired a lot of people, and I never look at cover letters. Right? My wife's an HR professional. And she and, hired, Kat, and she may be one of your mock interviewers. And she hires a lot of people, and she's all over the cover letters. Right? So there's a, there's a, it's, different people have different preferences. So having four or five people with different opinions, all kind of critiquing and emptying all the red pens, uh, like I did last term, and I'm sure Dr. Helm is doing this term. We're just trying to help. We're trying to give you all the, the guidance and, and put you in the best position when you apply for that job. So don't get too frustrated by that. Uh, uh, there is a standard set of things that are probably common in what we're all telling you, but I'm sure there's lots of things that are different as well, right? But just take it for what it is. Uh, listen to the feedback and, and eventually your resumes and your cover letters, you'll just keep tweak, tweaking them, they'll get a little better and a little better. And typically, people who apply for jobs, a lot of the ones I've seen, they don't do a real good job of that. So you guys are going to be way ahead of them. Okay? Also, the research, you, you, those of you who were in my classes last term, I can't emphasize that enough. Even if you just go to Google, if you haven't got the time to go to Google and find out what's going on in the company, uh, you're, the, the signal is you're not that interested in the job. If you go this deep, you're going to be that much further ahead again. Right. A couple of things I noticed on the massive amount of resumes and cover letters I've been looking at. In the cover letter, you tell what you could gain from the job, and that is critically important to you. It's important to me that you get these skills, but it's not important to the company. If you say, I really want this entry-level job at Shaw Industries so I can learn leadership teamwork, great, but you've got to reverse it. You've got to tell what you can do for them. This whole letter is about what you're bringing to the table. You're opening for an entry-level management position at Mohawk is an exact fit for my skill, ability, and education. 
I bring to the table, you know, four years work experience in Chick-fil-A. A lot of you talk about working in teams. If, if on those bullet points you've hired, you've fired, you've trained, you've supervised, put that. Some of you say, and you know, some of you think, well, it's just a fast food job, but maybe you increase sales. Put the percentage. We had a contest. I increased sales by 20% in the third quarter. We won an award. We reduced shrinkage. We improved customer retention. If you can give some data and numbers. So if you've hired or trained or worked in a team, that's quite, quite powerful to put on there. Be sure you spell out your degree appropriately. Some of you have called this business degree everything but its true name. You are getting a Bachelor of Business Administration in, and you've got six choices, accounting, accounting management, marketing, MIS, logistics and supply chain, or finance and applied economics. That's all we got, so pick one of those words. If you have a minor with a minor in, business analytics with a double major, list that, and use some of that real estate to talk about some courses and projects you've done. Any project you've done in a class, go ahead and emphasize that. Be sure you get that correctly. Some of you also have listed references from high school or in other programs on campus. Most of the time, by the time you're a junior or senior, it's pretty much expected that your two Dalton State references will be within your major. So a business professor in whatever you're majoring in, or at least a business professor, and make sure you've got that correctly. Make sure they have a copy of your resume before you really start applying for a job for real. Sometimes people will call me about a student and I'm thinking, I remember a few things about them. I put some notes in Outlook, but it would be so nice if I could be holding their resume and, and read off some good things. So be sure you do that. You're going to have a file in the cloud somewhere of about 10 versions of your resume for different jobs, for different companies, for different industries. And what I would urge you to do is every year take a look at your resume and update it. Every time you have your annual review at a company or you complete a year of school, add that on there. Update your courses because sometimes it's hard to update if you've let a lot of time go by and just constantly keep that updated. We have a database we use in the School of Business and we're forever updating our accomplishments to put in our resume. So this is sort of a living, breathing document. And when you send it out to a potential employer and send it to the mock interview, save your letter, your cover letter, and your resume as a PDF. Because sometimes, depending on what program they open it in, what version, what computer system they're using, what operating system, it'll look all strange on the page. So if you save it and send it as a PDF, it will keep the formatting, the fonts, the spacing that you want on there. So you do know how to save it as a PDF if you don't reach out to me. Most everybody has scanned their signature. We've got, uh, Tina uploaded something on how to do that. Mm -hmm. What else can you think of that I forgot to tell them? I have nothing I can think of. It's important when you do your mock interviews to pay attention to the feedback that the interviewers give you because it's very valuable information and they'll help you with future interviews through that feedback. Several folks have gotten a job from the mock interview. The, the person who agreed to do the mock interview doesn't even have a job opening, but they've been impressed by folks, and they'll find a job. They say, I want you. I'll figure out a way to keep you. So it's amazing what results from that, and this helps your network. This is some more people for you to link to and link in. All right, other questions? As you go through and you're editing your resume to get it ready to load up next week, if you get stuck on a question, it is fine for you to text me or send me an email if you've got a quick question. Don't just get stuck on something. If I can answer something for you, it's fine for you to reach out. That's why I'm here. We've got to get your resume right and get you out in the world of work. All right? All right, don't forget these assignments. Let's thank Professor Barker and everybody else.